Imagine Gambia is a very poor country. Let's face the facts. Countries like Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, Liberia, these countries are really, they end up with natural resources. In the context of gold, diamond, bauxite, chromite, iron ore, even petroleum. But imagine the wars they fought for years. Go back and see. It has retarded all what they've gained over the years. In other words, give them a very serious setback. And Gambia is a very poor country we cannot afford to allow conflict in this country. It is not in our collective interest. Yeah. Well, sir, um, sorry, sorry, I would like to, um, I want to know um, what can you do as your role to unite the political leaders in the Gambia? Because as you see, um, most of the political leaders in the Gambia, um, some of them are into this tribalism, as you said. So what is your role and what will be your greatest advice that you can put across to them? I mean, to be honest with you, it's a concerted effort, yeah. not an individual effort. My views, your views, should be very resonant and very direct to the point. If this is a view shared by all of us to say we would like to see us working together as a nation, let's look at this, look at this in this way. Gambia is for all Gambians, period. Politics aside, tribalism aside. And that is the major message, in my opinion, we should filter down. If this is something embraced by every Gambian, alone we cannot do it. But we can always make the clarion call to say, let's not do it. Why? We've seen it from other countries. It went the other way. In other words, it degenerated into a conflict situation of unprecedented proportion. So Gambia, in my opinion, we should not avoid, we should not allow that to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you are watching VM International TV and welcome. Earlier today, CDS Drame met the governor of West Coast region, Lamin Sane, concerning about how to maintain peace and stability in the Gambia. He addressed the people and the nation that peace is life and conflict will only divide us as Gambians and nothing else. He added by saying there is no room for tribalism in the Gambia. Gambia is a small country. Let's maintain peace, love and stability. Nobody would emerge as a winner if there's a problem in this country. Sure. All of us stands to lose, including my very side. We are talking out of experience. We've served in conflict within countries. We've seen the repercussions of conflict. Conflict comes with a lot of repercussions. In Australia, usually always, there's wanton destruction to lives and properties. In Australia, there's what we call vicious circle. In Australia, there's what we call deferred animosity. Although people can forgive, but they cannot forget. It's a natural instinct. You guys basically as journalists, usually always having drawn useful lessons from other conflict situations across the world. What is the main cause of conflicts in Africa? One of the main cause is tribalism, nepotism, and other forms. But mostly in Africa, tribal sentiments is the main cause of conflict in Africa. In Rwanda, within three months, within the span of three months, over 800,000 lives here perished. Those were the lives accounted for. Imagine those who died unaccounted for. And again, what was the cause of that war, civil war in, the, in Rwanda? It's tribal sentiment. Hutu, Tutsi. You ask yourself, what is the importance? Within 90 days, over 800,000 lives got perished. In Sierra Leone, even though it could perhaps be attributed to bad governance, but again, one of the underlying causes is tribal sentiments. In Liberia, tribal sentiment. In Cote d'Ivoire, tribal sentiment. The list would go on and on. Research were done, and they came to a conclusion. Most of the causes of conflict in Africa is as a result of tribal sentiment. Drawing that into the Gambia context, relationships are so interwoven. Our relationships are so interwoven. Why should we, as Gambians, allow tribal sentiment to creep into the fabric of this fine institution, or fine nation? Let me but be very clear. No individual tribe stands to win if there is a conflict. All of us would be a loser. I'm talking out of experience. 
either directly or indirectly. Everybody is going to be a loser. There's going to there's nobody would emerge as a winner. Nobody would emerge as a winner. Virtually everyone is going to be a loser, directly or indirectly. So we have a choice to make. Gambia, by the very size of Gambia, by the very nature of Gambia, we are all interrelated, directly or indirectly, two intermarriages. So then, let's ask ourselves this question. What is the rationale to advance tribal sentiment? What do we gain out of that? Let me ask you this question. You are the peace ambassadors. Let's give peace this time. Politics should not divide us. Tribal sentiment should not be encouraged, but rather should be condemned. They're all peace-loving governments. That's my strong message I want to share with you. Well, uh, uh, sir, you as the CDS of the Gambian National Army, yeah. you know, and army as an institution, what are you doing to make sure that you curb you know, tribalism in the country? If you look at it, I've been going around the country. I've engaged yeah. my troops. The essence of my trip is to see the working and living conditions of troops under my command. Equally use that moment, perhaps, to put across or use the platform to share with them my perspective as to what I expect from each and every one of them. And the perspective is such a wide perspective. How we do we reorganize and restructure the armed forces? And what individually and collectively we can play to advance that agenda as a team. Because in my strong view, it's a teamwork. I may have the vision, I may have all the plans, but again, it requires consultative efforts and synergy of efforts. Meaning every single member of the armed forces, we have a role to play. And together, I want to believe we can advance our collective agenda together. Now, on the issue of peace and security, I've engaged governors, regional governors, members of the other security apparatus across the country and other stakeholders. My message is the same message. How do we collectively work to work together to advance the agenda of peace and security in this country? Like I mentioned earlier on, it is in our collective best interest as individuals, as institution, as a nation, as a region, that we all work together to advance the culture of peace and tolerance. Because why? We all stand to gain together. And nobody would emerge as a winner if there's a conflict in this country. And one way we can do that, we must be very accommodative. We must be tolerant. And of course, we should see ourselves as Gambian. And Gambia for all Gambians. That's my stake. Because I'm talking out of experience. I've seen the repercussions of conflict, not hearsay. Many have served in conflict ridden countries. In other words, I'm drawing from those lessons. We've seen the repercussions of conflict. It retards progress. The economic, social, and political fabrics of a society is going to be seriously retarded if there's a conflict in any country. So nobody, imagine Gambia is a very poor country. Let's face the facts. Countries like Sierra Leone, <coughs> Ivory Coast, Liberia, <laughs> these countries are really, they end up with natural resources. In the context of gold, diamond, bauxite, chromite, iron ore, even petroleum. But imagine the wars they fought for years. Go back and see. It has retarded all what they've gained over the years. In other words, give them a very serious setback. And Gambia is a very poor country. We cannot afford to allow conflict in this country. It is not in our collective interest. Yeah. Well, sir, I'm sorry. Sir, you, I would you like had to. A, you, had a, you had a close door meeting with the governor, Mr. Sane. Mm -hmm. You know, what was the theme of the discussion? I mean, like I said, I've been going around meeting governors, and the message is just the same message. Those governors basically represent clans, societies, groups, and we want to believe as an institution we cannot do it by ourselves alone. That is to say, even though we are endowed, we are the custodians of the constitutions, we are the vanguard when it comes to the integrity and sovereignty of this country. Notwithstanding, the armed forces as an entity cannot do it by themselves alone. Hence, there's a need for collaboration and cohesion of efforts across all sectors and all areas of organization, which is why we believe the governors, they have a critical and pivotal role to play because they administer people. We expect them perhaps to share with the Afrikanians the need for us to work together. 
more so in the interest of how do we preserve peace and tranquility in this country. They have a role to play. My message is one of those. And also, how perhaps we should denounce violence in this country. How perhaps we should not allow politics to divide us further. Politics is a process. Mm -hmm. After politics, in my opinion, let's move forward. Sure. That's my stick. But if we allow to be hindered by philosophy or ideologies, that would perhaps be very detrimental to the coexistence and cohesion of this country. I think is it in our, in our interest. In my opinion, definitely it's not going to solve our interest. One more before you go. Um, I would love to ask this question. Um, my name is Musa Trawale from Home Digital FM. Um, I want to know um, what can you do as your role to unite the political leaders in the Gambia? Because as you see, um, most of the political leaders in the Gambia, um, some of them are into this tribalism, as you said. So what is your role and what will be your greatest advice that you can put across to them? I mean, to be honest with you, it's a concerted effort, yeah. not an individual effort. My views, your views should be very resonant and very direct to the point. If this is a view shared by all of us to say we would like to see us working together as a nation, let's look at this for, look at it in this way. Gambia is all Gambia, period. Politics aside, tribalism aside. And that is a major message in my opinion we should filter down. If this is something embraced by every Gambian, alone we cannot do it. But we can always make the clarion call to say let's not do it. Why? We've seen it from other countries. It went the other way around. In other words, it degenerated into a conflict situation of unprecedented proportion. So Gambia, in my opinion, we should not avoid, we should not allow that to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.